stories but this story is not just one that I enjoy it's also one that my friend Steph loves a lot and she's actually the one who introduced me to this book her favorite color is green and a lot of the illustrations are green but also it's just a really funny story this book is called the cat who wore a pot on her head the original title of this book was called Ben Molina, so you may have heard it the other way if you are like maybe my age. Um, but in my experience when I was a classroom teacher, children had never heard this book, but every time they did, they loved it. It's, it's a pretty silly story. Once again, you're gonna realize that this book is not a true story because typically cats don't wear clothes. They definitely don't dress themselves or do the errands that the kittens in this story are asked to do. This book is written by Jan Slapen and Anne Sider and the illustrations are by Richard E. Martin. So before we get started with this book, did you find someplace, some, someplace comfy to sit? I hope so. Did you find something soft and squishy to snuggle? Okay, get ready, prepare yourself to read. It's very important that readers of all ages are ready. Maybe you even might need a drink. Sometimes, especially when you're reading, you may need a drink. Okay, now I'm really ready. A cat who wore a pot on her head. There once was a cat named Benda Molina. She lived in a house on Cat Street where cats and kittens lived all together. Brothers and sisters, cousins and friends were in and out and all about. What a noisy place it was. One day when Benda Molina was playing, she found a shiny pot. She put it on her head and suddenly all the noise was gone. She liked the quiet so much she decided to wear the pot over her ears at all times. Coming from a large family, I too understand the joy of quiet. The same day, Mother Cat said to Benda Molina and her nine little brothers and sisters, I have to take care of a sick friend this afternoon, but oh dear, how am I going to clean the house and cook you supper too? Don't worry, said her kittens. When you come home, supper will be ready and the house will be all clean. We'll take care of everything. What nice little kittens they are. Mrs. Cat took Ben de Molina with her to her sick friend's house. I brought her to run errands, Mrs. Cat told her sick friend. As soon as Mrs. Cat wanted something, Ben de Molina, Ben de Molina, run home and tell your brothers and sisters it's time to put fish on to bake. So here's Mother Cat, here's her sick friend, here's Benda Molina with the pot on her head. And she was asked by her mother to put the fish on to bake. Benda Molina didn't hear what her mother had said. Her ears were still under the pot. Everything she heard was all mixed up. Did she put say to put the smish onto fake or to put the bish in the lake? Benda Molina wondered as she ran home. Oh, she must have said to put soap in the cake. Mama wants you to put soap in the cake, she told her brothers and sisters. And all the kittens wanted to please their mother, so they put soap in the cake. Here's the soap, here's the cake mix. And what happens when we add soap with water? It makes bubbles. I don't think I would want my cake to taste like bubbles. Do you? Almost as soon as Benda Molina got back to her mother, Mrs. Cat said, Benda Molina, Benda Molina, I forgot to tell the children to put the soup on to heat. Run home and tell them to put the soup on to heat. Again, Benda Molina didn't hear very well because of the pot. Put the boop on the beep, mop the moop on the feep. Oh, she must have said to iron the meat. She's running back home. She's gonna tell her brothers and sisters to iron the meat. 
Mama says to iron the meat, she told the kittens at home. They all wanted to please their mother. So they got out the ironing, the iron and ironing board and ironed the meat. All afternoon, Ben and Melina ran back and forth telling her brothers and sisters what mother wanted them to do. So here's the pieces of meat. There's the iron and the ironing board. Maybe your grown-up doesn't use one of these at home because of steamers or dry, dryers have like a dry feature that will de-wrinkle clothes, but irons are hot things that you don't want to touch. Um, but they iron out wrinkles or if there's like folds in fabrics, they make them lay flat. So they're ironing meat, which isn't a common practice. You usually only iron like clothes or fabric. So that should have been a clue to Benda Molina, but she wasn't thinking, she was just trying to please her mother. Once Miss Cat, Mrs. Cat said, Benda Molina, Benda Molina, run home and tell the children to sweep out the hall. Feep out the ball, meep out the mall. Gleep, bitty ball. Oh, mother must have said to hang chairs on the wall, Benda Molina decided. Mama wants you to hang the chairs on the wall, Benda Molina told the other kitchen kittens, and the children wanted to please their mother, so they got out the hammer and nails and hung up the chairs just like pictures. <laughs> that doesn't look very comfortable. But I do like the teamwork. Look at how they're all working together. Soon, all the neighbors gathered around the house to watch. There were so many watching that Benda Molina had to crawl between their legs to get back to her mother. Once again, Benda Molina's mother had a message for the children. Tell them to make sure to leave the key in the lock. Remember to leave the key in the lock. Benda Molina raced home saying to her, herself, leave the bee in the smock, smick the smee on the sock, sticky wee wubby gawk? Oh, she must have said to sew clothes on the clock. Slow, sew clothes on the clock, Ben and Melina told her brothers and sisters, and to please their mother, that's what they did. Ben and Melina ran back again to her mother. Ben and Melina, Ben and Melina, supper must be nearly ready. Go tell the children to make something to drink, mother said. Make wiffly sink, womp buffalo bank. Oh, she must have said to put a horse in the sink. <laughs> When Ben and Melina told her brothers and sisters what mother had said, they asked Mr. Horse, who lived down the street, if he would stand in the sink just to please their mother. By this time, animals had come from all over to see for themselves what was happening at Mrs. Cat's house. There were big animals and small animals and in between size animals. And look at them all waiting outside Ben and Melina's house, just watching. Mrs. Cat was almost ready to leave her sick friend when she said, Benda Melina, Benda Melina, run home and ask one of your brothers to fix my chair. Up in the air, sticky hair, purple hair. By the time Benda Melina got home, she decided her mother had a said, ask in a bear. And to please mother, the kittens asked a big friendly bear from the crowd. <laughs> Just then, Mrs. Cat came home. She saw soap bubbles rising out of the cake, the meat on the ironing board ready to bake. She saw chairs on the wall and a bear in the hall. She saw a clock dressed in pink and a horse in the sink. And then under her chin, 10 kittens marched in. What is the meaning of this? Mrs. Cat cried. Surprise, surprise, said the kittens. They thought they had pleased their mother. They thought they had done just what she wanted. We all did our best, they called out. But Ben and Melina was still mixed up. Asking the rest? She said to herself, Ben and Melina threw open the door and called, everyone come in. Oh my gosh, there's the clock dressed in pink. There's the bear in. The chairs on the wall, the ironed meat, the, the chairs on the wall, the soapy cake, and the horse in the sink. Mrs. Cat looked at the neighbors, at all the neighbors and friends. She looked at Benda Molina's head. Then she looked at her smiling kittens. She just couldn't stay angry. She knew it was all the fault of the pot. 
Everyone can stay for supper, said Mother Cat. She took the pot off Fendamelina's head and made two ear holes in it, and then she put it back on Fendamelina. Bendamelina, Bendamelina, give me a hug, said Mother Cat. And did Bendamelina give her mother a bug or a rug? No, she gave her mother just what she wanted. There, they're hugging. And that's the end of The Cat Who Wore a Pot on Her Head. I really love this book. I think it's such a great way to talk about rhyming words. Um, you'll notice that Ben and Melina mishears things because she only hears the end of the words. And so she comes up with silly rhymes and really wants to please her mother. It's also a wonderful reminder for all of us that we're all just doing our best in this time. So even if something goes a little bit wonky or a little bit weird, embrace it. Much like Mrs. Cat, she's a wonderful, understanding woman. I guess she would have to be with all of those kittens. But, and I also think that we can follow Mrs. Cat's example and find some ways to show compassion to our friends who might be sick during this time, whether that be um, just calling them and checking in on them or sending them some kind of supplies at a distance. We can all make the world a little bit brighter just by being ourselves. Well, thank you for reading the story with me today. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I sure did. Until next time, goodbye.